Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and uh, today's video goes out to all of you feeling and judging types, all of you extroverted feelers out there. And yeah, in the MBTI universe, it is often the INFJs, the ESFJs, the ENFJs and the ISFJs, wait did I say that already, that are credited with having extroverted feeling. Uh, but when Carl Jung used the term, he used it slightly differently. And I will make videos about what it means to be an extroverted feeling type according to Jung. But this is about how the term has become and what it has warped into to explain INFJs, ISFJs, ENFJs and ESFJs. And I summarize it here as, to be a feeling judger is to be in the role of a messenger or representative for a higher moral law or a belief system. But there are quite a lot of properties to this function. It, it relates to storytelling in the mind, the default mode network, thinking of experiences and qualities, people, social nuances, emotions and temperature, and all those things that are hard to measure or to understand objectively or logically. It also involves proactive control, which is about adjusting your behavior and actions in advance of a situation. It's about being organized in how you do something. It is by following a lane, linear or straight path towards something. And it is about making sure all of the things you feel are fit together. It is about looking at the whole before you look at the particulars. And uh, I nickname it the diplomat, but it could also be called the messenger, it could be called a storyteller, it can be called a lot of things, depending on how you have come to use this function. But the primary desire can be described as to living in accordance with your values and your beliefs, and to guide and help other people do the same. To manage and keep a good emotional temperature and a social climate. To act in a way that contradicts or... Yeah, this is the core fear, to act in a way that contradicts or fails your beliefs and higher ideals, or to fail to deliver on your promises and people's expectations on you. This is a huge one for extroverted feeling types, feeling judging types. We don't want this to happen. Uh, and we also don't want to cause tension, conflict or discord in the group. And the group is our conception of the people and who we find important. And not all feeling and judging types think of the humanity as their people. Some think purely from the national perspective, some think purely from a smaller group of like 10 people, or like a group of kin, a family, or a social network, or a community. So this means a feeling and judging type can accept to cause tension and conflict and discord with other groups than the one that they consider themselves belonging to. And the person that believes in humanity as the pure group, maybe they will have something against aliens or against animals. Who am I to know? The vulnerable function for a feeling and judging type, what makes a feeling and judging type vulnerable, is kind of showing consideration to the individual, reflecting on what other people are feeling and what other people need, thinking about and showing worry for other people, showing concern for an individual, listening to another person and hearing them out and hearing out why they did what they did and understanding and feeling their suffering. This is something difficult for a feeling judging type, it's something that makes them vulnerable. It's important for them and they need it to feel healthy, but at times they will seek to avoid or pretend not to care about other people so that they can focus on their overall story and the overall mission they want to tell themselves. Now, the feeling and judging type is an ideological type. We have a sense of ideology, a sense of community who we care about. We have a sense of what we believe in uh, and what values and what code of conduct we believe in, how we want to ensure our beliefs uh, follow through and what, how we want things to happen, how we want to get things our way. Now, uh, sometimes this can be something we get stuck in. It's our comfort zone. Uh, we feel comfortable when we are able to advance our ideology, our greater story, and when we are able to help the community, and when we are able to protect the people we care about. But at times this can be a comfort zone 
for a feeling judging type. You might be comfortable working purely towards the group you care about and ignoring everyone else. You might be comfortable uh, living in accordance with your values but ignoring what's right in each particular situation. And uh, what I want to teach you through this video is how important it is not to get too comfortable in this ego in these things and how important it is to sometimes make yourself open to people outside your group and your conception of kin and people who are suffering outside of what you can see and how important it is to show concern for other people and to actively think about what people might need and what people might want not just what you think they will dis need or what you think they should have um, the thinking and perceiving function is the grounding function or a feeling and judging types self-protection mechanism uh, a feeling and judging type will protect themselves and their feelings by disconnecting from the individual by pretending not to hear other people when other people are talking to them by pretending not to care about other people and by pretending to be objective and to be unbiased and to be cool in their judgment and to show no emotional reaction even when you feel something and this is a defensive mechanism for a feeling judging type it's not a native state as it is for an INTP or an ENTP so the INFJ or the ENFJ will use thinking and perceiving as a shield and it is all about pretend because they do care about people they do care about values they do care about other people but they will sometimes put this on this aura of being completely inconsiderate to other people and uh, this is the immature tendency in an ENFJ or an ESFJ and uh, as I said before judging and perceiving was not conceptualized in Carl Jung's original theory but it came with the development of the MBTI when the MBTI started the judging and perceiving dichotomy and started describing it in a way that Carl Jung didn't intend it to be <laughs> uh, by describing judging as organization and structure by describing perceiving as adaptable and flexible they created and they can start discussing new networks in the mind that Carl Jung wasn't aware of so the key motivation is to improve social order and structure, to move and guide people in need, and to drive people forward, to help and to aid other people. Uh, um, a feeling and judging type might say that, I'm a part of humanity, I feel driven to help, but not to serve humanity, and I want to promise to those that hope that it will get better. I feel that other people are a part of me and that I share in the suffering of others. Their struggles are my struggles. I am instantly connected to the people around me, even those that I dislike. They are a part of me and I am a part of them. I want to live in harmony with other people and I won't have peace until everyone has found peace. So, feeling and judging is about forming a moral and a belief system, uh, forming an ideology, and studying how morals fit together. How do my values about uh, helping people work in practice? How do I live in accordance with my beliefs? How do I act in congruence with what I think is right and wrong? What, uh, how do my different values combine? What if two of my values are disconnected and if I have to pick between them? Which one is more important than the, other, than the other? It's kind of about forming a moral law that will guide your actions in each situation. And when you have a strong ideology, that's when you're going to be able to make the most decisions. The stronger your sense of ideology, the easier it will be for you to be proactive and to make decisions and to start up new projects and to engage people and to deal with people. So if you're struggling to connect with people, it is often because you lack a strong ideology. It's also about living by a belief system or a moral principle and in applying this moral principle in each situation. How do I 
act out and make sure that uh, I enforce this moral law in each situation. How does my moral law apply to this particular condition or to this particular person? It's about acting to organize social dynamics in your culture. And here's the thing about feeling and judging. Feeling and judging tends to organize circles and groups and gatherings. We set up campfires. We invite people to come and join us. We start up meetings and we team the dinners and team parties. We con uh, conceptualize social rituals like new traditions or old traditions if you're a sensing type. And we put together social circles and places where people can feel comfortable and where people can relax. Circles that exist purely for the chance of interaction and relaxation and for fun and for connection. Uh, feeling and judging types set up communities and organize communities. The body language of a feeling and judging type uh, can be described in uh, different ways. First, the warm and relaxed directing gestures, the relaxation of the fingers while gesturing towards a person, uh, the moving of all the fingers in harmony with one another, in sync, rather than uh, precise and uh, rough finger motions. Um, they make you, with, uh, with our body language, we make people lower their guards and we make people feel safe, like uh, this is a guiding motion, not an ordering motion. We are not giving orders, we're not telling you exactly how or what to do, but we're telling you about this you can do or you can do something like this. We give people uh, more soft guidance. And uh, this tends to make people open up and it makes people f listen and uh, it makes people more receptive to our message. We have a warm and relaxed smile emanating from the upper lips. So look at if a person smiles with their upper lips or with their jaws and shins. Um, this smile can be described as friendly or more negatively as unserious and as diplomatic. Unserious in the sense that uh, feeling and judging types can strike you, strike you as careless or carefree or too carefree, too soft, in a sense, uh, of not taking the situation seriously enough, of not being rigorous enough, of being careless with things and uh, with rules and with things like that. So it doesn't strike you with trust and it makes, doesn't make you necessarily feel like you can rely on the person, but it makes you feel... Um, they do strike you as peaceful and uh, cooperative and diplomatic and friendly and it does make you feel more warm and it does feel, make you feel more connected. A feeling and judging type has a persuasive, diplomatic and jolly voice, strong, warm and round articulation and enunciation of letters. In particular at the start of a sentence, but with a sharp and cold break at the end of sentences from thinking and perceiving. Feeling and judging types tend to have a straight head uh, posture and they engage in sudden, spontaneous and charming smiles. Deliberate smiles. Uh, their smiles tend to seem deliberate. Uh, warm and encouraging head nods. Uh, like uh, encouraging people to share and to keep on going. Uh, relaxed shoulders, lowered shoulders rather than a tensed and uh, upwards oriented shoulders. And often shoulders that are slightly pushed forward rather than to held at the back. Uh, they often relax and lower and push forward their shoulders slightly, signaling openness, friendliness and a peaceful posture. And what feeling and judging gives you if you develop it and if you master it is communication intelligence. The ability to explain yourself, to share your story with other people, to tell other people what your story is. The ability to direct and to be the person you want to be. To become a person or a character that you idealize and that you find is good. To see yourself as a good person. To be able to... Um, create a friendly impression and to show people that you have good intentions and a good character, to show an openness to discuss and negotiate with other people and to have an ability to negotiate and create diplomatic environments where people listen to and talk to and discuss things together with one another. 
uh, being able to barter and negotiate with other people to say if I do this and then you do that um, to sell their thoughts and ideas to other people to wrap their ideas up in a neat box and to present it well um, it's the primary skill of a salesman or a pitcher of an idea someone who knows to present and show something off to an audience in a way that generates interest but it's also about establishing community and connection with the person you're talking to, making the other person feel that you are aware of them and that you pay attention to them and that we are one. We are all here one. We are all here together in this. So that's a big part of it. Um, what I mentioned before about the vulnerable function is that uh, as a diplomat type you may be more comfortable thinking about the group before your own needs. You might also ignore what is right in the moment to focus on what you have been taught or what you have told yourself in the past is the right thing ideologically. And you may sometimes compromise on small social matters that might be important. Um, and. This is important to acknowledge because this is your blind spot and this is your vulnerable function. This is the things that you might feel bad about without realizing it. You might feel bad about not taking care of yourself. You might feel bad about letting other people push you over on small social matters like uh, who sits where and who eats first and so on and so on. And uh, it might be important to sometimes express and be open to yourself and honest with yourself and with other people about that. That sometimes, uh, while often this is okay, um, sometimes if it is important to you, acknowledge that to yourself. Um, and this is a part of being vulnerable because uh, often the thing that keeps you from doing this is the fear of being rejected for it. The fear that other people will think you're stupid or evil or that you have bad intentions or that you're yeah, uh, selfish in this. Uh, but really it's okay to be selfish at times. And a key to being vulnerable is develop a strong ideology that encourages yourself to be this way. Develop a code of conduct that <laughs> builds in uh, also small issues not just the bigger issues you tend to think in terms of the bigger moral law and who you want to be and the bigger picture uh, but also build in an understanding of and an elaborate ideology that also explains things like uh, dinners and how to manage dinners and how to manage people in the moment it's also important to not look away from individuals around you that might be suffering in your group to notice uh, even if the group is happy when someone else in the group is not happy uh, and to notice uh, the people that are suffering and to notice emotional discrepancies and when people are being inauthentic. Often it's easy to forget that people may, might sometimes be inauthentic as a feeling judging type. You tend to trust people, you tend to uh, think that people have good intentions but sometimes people might lie about what they need or that they're happy when they're not sometimes they might not show how their true feelings and they might not dare to express how they really feel so show awareness of this um, it's also important to recognize that uh, hope is your primary fuel and your inspiration the hope of other people, hope from other people uh, on you is important. You need to, as a feeling judging type, have other people's hope. Other people need to hope that you can be a good person. Other people need to hope that you can deliver on your promise. Other people need to believe in you or want to believe in you. That's the important thing. They don't have to believe you, but they want to hope that they can believe you. And if you have their hope, that is your primary fuel. That is how you can deliver on promises. That is how you can stay committed to a group. And that is how you can make sure that you stay passionate about other people. And how you can ensure not to give up. If you feel that you have lost other people's hope. And that other people don't hope in you anymore. That is the biggest sense of rejection for a feeling and judging type. So if you have lost other people's hope or feel that other, you have lost other people's hope, talk with them about it and see if it's true first and uh, see what you can do to regain their trust. 
practice reminding yourself about how you feel and what you personally need. Think about what other people might need from you that they don't tell you. Think about what other people might be struggling with that they are too afraid to share with you. And uh, ask yourself what you need and that you are too afraid to ask other people for. Consider if there are any smaller social issues that are important to you like a seat you want to sit at or something you want to do at the dinner table or some small ritual that can seem insignificant but that might actually be significant to you. Um, when um, you feel that you have lost other people's hope, the negative feeling and judging spiral is to uh, lashing out by making self decisions in the moment. Uh, making tactical decisions and taking precautions not to get hurt, uh, to put on a front, to pretend to be careless to other people's needs, and to pretend that you don't care and that other people have hurt you and that it doesn't matter to you, even when it has. It can also be by taking needless risks and pretending that you are invulnerable. Feeling and judging types might sometimes take careless risks in life, doing things that will put themselves and other people at harm's way. Uh, they can engage sometimes in martyr-like behavior in an effort to get other people to notice them and what they are doing. But typically, this will only harm them and the other people around them. Unhealthy diplomats may say things like, other people don't listen to my stories and what I have to say. People don't share in or appreciate my beliefs, my ideology. Other people reject the things I do for them or don't appreciate how I help them. The people around me don't seem to appreciate the things I do to help and guide them. People don't seem to want to attend or take part in the teams and the events that I organize. And I keep getting blamed for things that I haven't done. The last one is also very interesting. Uh, uh, sometimes feeling and judging types uh, can be used in society as scapegoats for problems. And um, yeah, this is something worth being aware of uh, and sometimes feeling and judging types will take on the blame of other people if something has gone wrong the feeling and judging type as a part of the martyr ritual will say it was I that did it and they will take the blame and they will be the one that is unjustly framed or charged with this uh, issue Sometimes they do it to save other people and in an effort to help other people. And yeah, it's a tricky thing. I've seen it happen many times. People don't seem to want to attend or take part in the teams and events that I organize. It's also about like uh, making sure that you are organizing something that people want and that you actually engage in considerations of what other people want and what other people need. Sometimes you don't even think about what other people need. You just assume that they need something. You set up an event. And you don't even think about if other people need it or not. So it's also important to think about if other people need it or not. And to ask other people what they need. To read and listen to other people's stories and uh, to issues. And to find ways to respond to them. It's also important to ask other people before you help them. Do you need this? Do you want this? Uh, rather than to enforce it without being invited to, because that can also open you up to giving things to people that don't want anything. So, yeah, that's also important. And the same goes for appreciating your beliefs and ideology. Uh, the first step here is to listen to what other people believe in and what other people find important and to connect it to what you find important and to what you believe in. That's a good starting point. Finally, I want to end this video by discussing that there are aggressive and friendly diplomats. Sometimes feeling and judging types are described as manipulative and smothering in what they do. And this is actually not true if you are a friendly or pacifistic diplomat. Uh, it's important to note that some people in society are born with more aggressive personality traits, which makes you more uh, aggressive with what you believe in, more aggressive with your ideology, more aggressive with your message and people that are more open with their beliefs, open with their message, and open to compromise. And friendly diplomats have a style that is more like bartering and listening to needs and to going in circles. If other people don't believe in something you say, then you let it go and then you find something else that they might like. 
uh, aggressive diplomats are not unhealthy per se at all. Uh, their style is just different. They're different in the sense that they can be the crusaders and society that stand up on the front lines and that say uh, justice for the people and that speak out for and that are passionate about their message and that really hammer their way in. Uh, they can be um, the drill sergeants that get people to do unbelievable feats. They are relentless in their charisma and in their ability to rouse people and to rally people towards a cause and they keep on holding on to and pushing for their idea or their ideology until people listen rather than to give up an ideology until you find something that people believe in. So these are just two different styles to getting what you want and uh, yeah that's how I want to end this video. Are you an aggressive or a friendly diplomat? What is your diplomat style? How do you relate to being a diplomat? What issues are you facing as a diplomat? What are the things that you are dealing with? I really want to go deeper today. I want to go deeper in every description. I've, I'm done with the overall system that is neo Jungian typology. I'm almost done with the book. Now I want it to be relevant for people. Now I want to make sure that I actually include examples of people that are dealing with these struggles. Now I want to talk in depth about the health issues and the considerations and the thoughts of these people. Now I want to really go deeper into the meaning of all of this theory and what it can do for other people. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope that it helped you in some way or form and I hope to see you guys in the next video. I am going on a vacation actually, uh, so the content won't be as frequent for the next few weeks, but I promise good things in the future, amazing things in the future, great things in the future. Thank you all for watching and see you guys.